Hey guys, so uh, welcome to this tutorial. Today we're gonna paint a funky toucan uh, or toucan. I don't know, depending on what kind of accent <laughs> you want to use to pronounce that word. So I really like birds. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go for this bird. It's a very very colorful bird. So it's gonna be pretty fun. We're gonna use a lot of color. And uh, well, without further ado, uh, let's get started. I'm gonna use uh, my my new palette that I, I bought actually like a few days ago, uh, which is made by Rosa, which is a Ukrainian company that do professional grade watercolor. And uh, yeah, gonna test it today for the for the first time. So we'll see. Uh, as you can see here, this is my test for the color, and they they're pretty bright and nice. So I think it's gonna be gonna be cool with this uh, with this painting that we're gonna do today. So there we go. Um, so for the toucan, I'm basically I'm gonna start with the with the beak because there's a lot of color here. So beak is kind of a shade of green, bluish, and reddish at the at the end. Uh, then we have uh, all this area here that's gonna be uh, yellow, and all the rest of the body that is pretty black. So I think I'm not gonna detail pretty much the the black part of the body. Uh, just focus on the on the main color. So we keep this whole painting pretty, uh, you know, easygoing and like beginner friendly. So let's get let's get started. I'm gonna actually another thing. I'm gonna use those uh, those two brush uh, that I also bought like a few days ago from Rosa. Uh, so it's a number five and a number two. They are synthetic brush. Uh, they really affordable, and uh, it's the first time I'm going to use them, so that's going to be going to be interesting as well. So, without further ado, again, let's start this painting, and we're going to go first with the beak. So we're going to water, we're going to water our beak area, so we can start applying color. Up. I use, I don't use cotton paper, so uh, cotton paper is really the best uh, when you want to apply a lot of water and in terms of cutting quality as well, it's, uh, it's really amazing paper. It's also really expensive and you know as a beginner uh, you can you can start with cellulose paper, it's the one I use, 300 GSM, that's pretty pretty fine. Okay, so let's start with our first uh, color, and I think I'm gonna go for uh, like this green. That's pretty emerald and nice. Look at this, so colorful. And we're gonna start to apply some here. There we go. Then we're gonna mix it with some blue because there's a little bit of blue over there. I think I'm gonna go for that one. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's perfect. A bit diluted. Oh, let me put like a little bit of blue here. There we go. And then we're gonna start using our red, and I'm gonna go with the. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try the matter matter. Red, this is what they call it. Wow, this is very juicy. <laughs> very, very juicy. And we're gonna, wow, very dark too. Maybe a bit too dark. Uh, let's go for a more uh, light one. No. Do, do, do. Uh, maybe a cadmium red light is gonna be better. Yeah, definitely better. Um, another thing too is, uh, as always, watercolor. What you see uh, when you paint, and the final results definitely gonna be uh, very different because, as you know, when the when the color dry, uh, a lot of the pigments tend to be absorbed by the paper. So. Don't worry. When you start, you can you can go. <laughs> you 
can go heavy on the color and uh, it's likely going to be it's likely gonna be to be it's likely to be okay oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and we don't want to to get into anything too complicated so okay so here we apply some uh, orange uh, this one is cadmium cadmium orange it's a very it's a very nice orange uh, we have some orange here too this one I didn't wire the second part of the peak so I'm gonna do it now There we go. Keep our peak up. We're gonna keep it here for a while, and I'm gonna move to I'm gonna move to the yellow, the yellow area here, and I think I'm gonna go for uh, a really nice uh, cadmium yellow. So it's also very uh, look at this. It is so bright. Those pigments are really nice. Really, really nice. Oh, this is great. Okay, I'm gonna add that here. I'm gonna water my yellow part as well. I'll just try to not touch the the big part. Otherwise, <laughs> if we connect the if we connect the water, it's gonna be not nice. As you can see here as well for the eye, I'm just gonna water over it because uh, we're gonna apply uh, we're gonna apply the uh, black of the eye at the end when the when all the color here is uh, dry. So you know it's gonna be it's gonna be fine. And the around the eye is a little bit like bluish. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use the uh, the water that I applied just now to basically wash around the eye in a nice, in a nice way. Okay, I think we have enough water. Let's apply, let's apply our yellow. Wow, look at this yellow. It is, <laughs> it's so yellow. I love it. So you can go heavy on the heavy, sorry, on the on the pigment for the for the yellow. It's perfectly fine. And again, as I say, like uh, when it's gonna dry, uh, this. Beautiful yellow is gonna lose some of some of its color, its brightness. So yeah, you can always go heavy on the <laughs> on color without taking too much too much risk here. There you go. And as I say, there's a little bit uh, there's a little bit of blue uh, around the eye so i'm gonna i'm gonna use the fact that there's a lot of water to, to make my blue like this and i'm just gonna let the 
water do this thing? I'm just gonna just stretch all around. Also at the very bottom of his, uh, let's call it like neck or like maybe <laughs> like belly here, uh, there's a little bit of red, so we can go uh, again with some cadmium red here. And as it's still like kind of wet, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix it up with the existing water. And I'm gonna let it stretch and let it do this thing. Which is basically what you want to do mostly with watercolor. Like you want to let the, the water go everywhere. Except here maybe. <laughs> because it looks like a bird is crying. So what you can do is to dry completely your brush and you can go and pick up the color like this. There you go. I think it's fine. Look at this. Let's go. Let's go all up here as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick some as well. Okay, that's fine. Let the let the water color do thing. It's important. Okay, so our next phase is gonna be to. Uh, start playing with the with the black area. So uh, What I think I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna use uh, Maybe a, um, I mean this is also something you can do you can use a, a hair dryer uh, all over all over the painting so you can actually like uh, Completely dry it so you can actually start to paint the the black part because as this part is still wet if I add black here it's probably gonna like mix together the same way the red mix with the with the with the yellow on like the blue around the eye just did so I'm gonna use uh, an air dryer right now and I'm gonna dry all this and I'm gonna continue uh, after that so hang out tight for you it is gonna be it's just gonna be a second magic of, <laughs> of video <laughs> So as you can see now, like everything is, everything is dry. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you might notice a little bit the, the color, the pigment is also a little bit uh, less bright, which is completely normal. So um, now we're gonna, we're gonna apply uh, the, the black area uh, of the bird. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna water it first and like a little nut on on the on the black, <laughs> using black uh, in watercolor. A lot of uh, professional watercolor artists actually uh, don't use uh, black as as a color. Uh, you'll see like in many uh, I can say like um, palettes that you can buy, like the one the one I, the one I bought from from Rosa. Uh, there's there's a black color there uh, that you can use. Uh, the one on, on Rosa is called I think it's just called black. And you have it here. Whoop. Yeah. So that one here. Um, so yeah, my point is like most of uh, professional watercolor artists uh, don't use black. They always mix different color to to get into their uh, darkest darkest tone and to achieve black that will mix uh, dark blue and get some add some some brown and they will they will do their own mix they will not use actually black but uh, it's okay for us to use black <laughs> it's uh it is easier we can go we can go for we can go for black we have here it's a very dark very nice black and as I say at the beginning oh look at this how the how it's spread everywhere if we had this, uh, if we had done this with our uh, uh, different area of the bird still wet, we will have like a like a really <laughs> interesting mix of uh, of black and the other color. So as I said at the beginning, uh, I don't want to go crazy 
detail on the on the black part of the bird. I just want to uh, I want this piece to just be focused on the on the actual bird itself, like his eye area and the beak, of course. So I don't want to detail uh, too much the the black part. So I'm just gonna oop, apply heat a little bit with the tip of my brush, so it look like like a bit of the the feather. There you go. Then I will just up let the black go. like this. I think it's fine. I don't want to go too, too detailed. Now, there's also black uh, in different other area of the bird, and specifically uh, around this beak here and here, there's, there's, there's black. So we're gonna, we're gonna take care of that line right now. So for this part, I'm just gonna do wet and dry. I'm not gonna water this area. It's just gonna go like this because it gives me more control over where the black is going. That's okay. It's not to go to go too crazy, right? I'm gonna darken a little bit the top of the head because they were somewhere and it's just spread, which is not a big deal. That's what what I call it here. But yeah. Okay. And as this area is completely dry, yes. I'm also gonna add black into or I the bird high right here. So, whoop, just gonna do a circle. Yeah, that's always the delicate part. Uh, if you don't feel uh, comfortable doing it with a brush, feel free to use a pen. If you have, if you have a, uh, a tracer pen uh, that is uh, water resistant, so you need to check. Yeah, you need to be water resistant, otherwise it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not gonna, it's gonna work really good. Uh, if it's water resistant, uh, we'll go for it. There you go, yeah, like, I should not do that. <laughs> I'm a um, perfectionist, I always want to, you know, to fix things. Uh, which is always a battle with watercolor because you want the color to basically like go and spread pretty much everywhere. Uh, so here we go. So I think it's okay for the for that part. Now I'm gonna add so on the beak here, our bird has a little uh, what can call them like kind of zebra. I will call them zebra here. Uh, that go uh, from here to here and like a little bit here too. So we're gonna work those zebra. And I think I'm gonna use, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I think I'm gonna use, uh, <laughs> let me see the name of it. It's called English Red. It's a darker, darker tone red. Oh, that 
I think it's gonna be fine for what I wanna do, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna dilute it with water. I don't want it to be too, too pigmented in case of it will be too strong and too visible. And we're gonna do, wait, we're gonna do over. Oh, this is perfect, yes. So it has tiny, tiny spike like this on its peak. All the way down. Like that. So those don't need to be uh, super detailed and don't use too much pigment, otherwise it's, it's gonna be very, very visible and it, it might, might look weird. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, be be light with your with your stroke for that one. And, uh, it's a very beautiful bird. Like uh, it's look like a dinosaur a little bit. <laughs> With this the giant beak. And they're very funny bird. I actually uh, get a chance to play with one uh, <clears throat> in a zoo. Uh, in Germany and uh, they're a very funny bird they they kind of scare you with their with their giant beak <laughs> it feels like uh, they could like just like cut your finger off but they they're pretty cool they're pretty easy going birds so uh, you know no worry there okay um, well uh, I think it's pretty uh, it's pretty okay so as you can see uh, at the bottom of my of my beak, I, I let the the water go just go like a little bit the way the way it wanted. Uh, I can I mean honestly I kind of like it. I like when color just go and mix like and do pretty much what they want. I think it's it's nicer. It got like it give you like this feel of like uh, it's natural and it's pretty cool. So I'm okay with this. Uh, you can control that kind of thing if you, when you water this area to try to be like, to not go uh, over, or meant to pass the line that you did with the, with the pen from the trace. And you can kind of control this, but I'm fine with this. It's, it's fine to me. So I don't want to touch it that much. So at that point, what I will do uh, eventually is to uh, maybe add a little bit uh, more of uh, uh, cadmium yellow here to just bright uh, this area a little bit more because it's, uh, it's very visible and kind of like it. So I'm just gonna add another layer of the yellow and that's gonna be it for this piece I'm gonna touch it more So another thing with watercolor, it's like you really need to <laughs> to know when to stop. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just gonna continue to, to do things. So, uh, like for example, on the beak, there's a, uh, this area is very orangey, uh, and I didn't really, uh, I'm not super satisfied, I would say, with this uh, with this uh, orange. I don't think it's super orange, so I can use a little bit of this cadmium yellow and just like apply here a little bit of it. Uh, to just make it like more uh, vibrant. There we go. Can go until the end as well. Can mix everything. It's perfectly fine. There we go. Okay, we can then uh, go a bit here too as well. There we go. Okay, I'm stopped touching this piece. <laughs> Uh, 
Perfect, so a super tiny final uh, detail that you can do. Uh, so around the eye here, uh, you can, as you can see on my on my trays, there's another um, uh, circle that is around the eye. So to do those, uh, I don't recommend you go with a with a brush. Uh, it's very fine uh, detail. So except if you if you feel comfortable uh, doing that kind of thing, uh, I'll I'll do it. Uh, the eye has a tiny light reflect. So to do this, you can use uh, gouache, so white gouache, tip the, the top of your brush and apply like a tiny dot of white on the top of the eye. Or uh, you can use uh, a white pen like this one. Uh, and here we go. And this is what I'm gonna do because it's faster. Here we go. Huh. Yeah, of course, my uh, my black is not completely wet, I think, or my <laughs> maybe my, my pen is like kind of on the, uh, on the end, who knows, but it's okay, look like it works, so don't need to, to put too much anyway, so see, just make this tiny reflection in the eye, that's fine. Then, if you want to do the the, the circle that go around uh, and again if you feel uh, comfortable doing it with uh, using the brush uh, go for it but if you want to be 100% sure <laughs> uh, that you're not gonna you're not gonna miss it uh, I will say use a, a pen because pen is much more easy to use than to use a brush. Yeah. I'm just gonna do it this way. Et voilà. Your toucan. Or toucan in French, but you know, same words. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, mini tutorial and uh, as usual, uh, we'll see you uh, in our next one. We usually publish two tutorials per week uh, on our YouTube channel and uh, we also publish exclusive tutorial on our Patreon. And if you want to learn watercolor painting, you can also go to our uh, Watercolor Academy and all those links are down below. Oh, yeah down below <laughs> uh, this video so uh, feel free to go check it out and well i will see you in the next tutorial uh, see you later